Hey biggies, welcome to another beer log and welcome to the beautiful neoclassical city of Vienna. Um, we have been on quite the road trip, so apologies if we're a little bit... Um... We're a bit half cut, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it's not too bad with the Craft Beer Channel. Basically all day we've been riding around on little electric scooters, being obnoxious tourists and uh, sitting on a beach bar. Yes. By the Danube, which, I mean, to be honest, it was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, it was we're okay. a little bit sunburned. So we, we're here for uh, a specific video. We're, do, we're doing the next Beer School episode, which is all about yeast. So we visited Lallemand at the Ottak Klinger Brewery yep. uh, in the heart of Vienna. So that's why we're here, and that video is coming in a couple of weeks. It'll take a little while to edit together. Um, but after we'd done that yesterday uh, and gone out, gone out with those guys and went on a crazy whirly whirly thing. So how high are we? A couple of hundred, a hundred meters, I'd say. Above Vienna. This is making me feel very unwell, but it's <laughs> Okay, I don't feel so bad now. I feel like if I we I mean, flew it's still off. instant death. Yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> We've now spent the day hunting down an old school unknown beer style called Vienna Lager. But it's not entirely unknown, is it? Because I there's mean, one famous brewery that makes it. We, uh, to be honest, my gateway beer was Brooklyn Lager, yeah. which, you know, is the much fabled gateway beer for a lot of people in the yeah, world. Absolutely. Vienna style lager from yeah. Brooklyn. Um, uh, so do you know what? We came to the spiritual home of Brooklyn. Uh, sorry, not of Brooklyn. Of Vienna Lager. Of Vienna Lager. Vienna? Yeah. How difficult has it been to find a Vienna style yeah. lager? Vienna means nothing to them. Um, <laughs> Cue the, the 80s disco classic. Yeah, we'll see how much we can get away Obviously, with uh, yeah. without violating mm. copyright. So we know roughly what Vienna Lager is, thanks to Brooklyn. We're going to let the amazing Conrad, who we did an awesome city tour with, for many hours, with not a lot of beer, last night, tell the true story of Vienna Lager. I think what, what Hans Andrea, who owned the Schweckerter Brewery, did uh, in the 1830s was that he went to England with his friend Gabriel Sedlmeier from, from the Spaten Brewery in Munich and from with Gerd Lederer from the, uh, the Lederer Brewery in, in Nuremberg. And they, at the time, British brewing industry was much more advanced than, than, than anything find the continent. Uh, <laughs> well, they, they, they have some good things there, yeah, I don't know. But, what did they, they had, no, one thing is, steam power was, was not used here like in, in England it was. But the most, maybe the most advanced thing they had was, was uh, modern moldings. And so, uh, Anton Dreher, when he returned to Vienna, he said, well, if we could produce pale ale malt, like the Brits did at the time, uh, we could brew beers that are paler in color. Because at the time, in most places in, in, in Europe, <coughs> you would brew Bavarian style beer. Bavarian style beer was a dark, very full-bodied beer, almost sweetish. So, Anton Dreher had the beer, it was Pretty much darker than that one, but much paler than, than the dark beers of his time. And people in Vienna were not so sure first because he, he introduced British malting. He, he was called the, the British Maltster. He was not so famous for being a brewer, but for someone who was innovative in malting and malting didn't interest people. But then they saw that the beer was much brighter than, than the beers they were used to, and it was successful. That success lasted for several years, uh, but at the same time, almost the same time, one year later, Josef Grohl in Pilsen brewed the first Pilsen Urker, which was well, the same color as this one. So even paler beers came to the market and, and golden colored Pilsners uh, replaced uh, Vienna Lager by the end of the 19th century, whereas in the 1870s, Vienna Lager was very successful because it was uh, uh, always displayed at the world exhibitions in Paris and, 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 and other places. And it um, was especially successful uh, as an export beer to, to Britain. 
So thanks, comrade. Thanks, that, comrade. Was, uh, that was uh, yeah. very in depth. We and, didn't get to chat to him as much as we wanted because yeah. everyone wanted a piece of Conrad. I mean, why wouldn't I mean, you in this later house? What, what a great hat as well. You know, the steampunk Benny Hill look yeah. amazing. So this is the original Vienna Lager, the first one ever invented, and you can see it already looks like Brooklyn Lager, right? Yeah. I mean, the colour is ready, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, look at that. It's beautiful. So, so it's using Vienna malt. Uh, which is uh, the, 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 the guy who, who invented this beer learned about while in Britain um, and he, he basically invented a beer that no one had seen before because it was before that everything was really roasty they didn't have the technology for the non-direct heat roasting of malt yeah. so this was revelatory oh 100% and the other sort of factor that we learned from Comrade that came in was the mass manufacture of glassware uh, which is very geeky, but before that point, everyone was drinking out of uh, stoneware. So we're talking big tankards. You couldn't see the colour of it. Yeah, they didn't see... know what they were putting in their bodies. You, you couldn't see the cleanliness of it. And there was a thing. There was a real thing that you know when people saw this, they were like, "Wow, it's so clear." Yeah, it must. Be well, not not necessarily clear, but just lighter, so they could lighter. see light from it. Exactly. It would have been hazy. They didn't have yeah, yeah, yeah. any there kind of no filtration. filtration. Yeah. But it would but the it, you'd have been able to see it. light through it. Exactly. It would have been much brighter than perhaps what they were used to. They'd yeah. have had the shock of suddenly seeing the beer they're drinking in glass, and then they'd have had the shock of this being much, much brighter. Yeah. Um, but in terms of flavour, it's got much more caramel than Brooklyn Lager does. Yeah. Much less hop, much less bitterness. Yeah. And it's much sweeter. But it's not too sweet. I think it's a really nicely balanced beer. Do you know what? I mean, it's not quite as refreshing as, as well, this is the other thing. So timing is everything in this world. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> Vienna style lager was basically shit out of luck because they a year later it got superseded. It's, by, the, it's the mini disc of beer. It's, it's like everyone was like, hey, mini discs are cool. And then MP3 players went, nam it. Yeah, mini discs were great. I had a mini disc player. But of as soon as MP3s came out and the internet and everything revolutionised the world. Yeah. Much could be said about Czech lager as well in, uh, in all that kind of stuff. One year later, yeah. Uh, Czech, Czech lager man. was the MP3 player going, actually, we've got a much better way of doing yeah. this, and you're all going to like it a lot more. And that's what happened. So Hellas now dem uh, um, dominates here, yeah. and it's really hard to get hold of. We kept ordering the original or the Vienna lager, yeah. and, you and you got handed a Hellas from Otakringer or yeah. Schwachachter. Yeah. So we had to ask for what we should have been asking for is the well, no, that's Vienna lager. <laughs> It's okay, I'm fine with it. Um, but it's definitely worth seeking out. A, because it's quite a unique flavour, uh, and B, because it's um, it's a little bit of history that you'll be drinking and you can't get it elsewhere. But we, we have found a place, it's just very rarely on tap, so you'll often have to ask for it in bottle and say, like, rotus, like red. Don't ask for the dark stuff, because then you get a doppelbug. Like that. <laughs> but we also had, I mean, they have like a lager culture, definitely, in, in, in Vienna, so we've had a great Zwickle, some, some decent Hellas, and, and now this, and yeah, it's enough variation to keep you going in the lagers, but the fact that this has died out so much is a real shame, I think. Yeah. I think it's, it's a delicious beer, and at 5.5, it's just about sessionable, it's pushing it. I think it's pretty good. So if you ever come to Vienna, um, seek it out. Seek it out. Make sure you also seek out Beer Lovers, which was on our Instagram TV channel mm. uh, where we did a tour with them because they make a delicious, much hoppier Vienna lager as well. Um, so you, you can find it, but finding the classic stuff is a bit tricky. But that just makes it more rewarding, right? Prost. Prost. Yeah. Ooh.